Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Sarah Berry Show podcast. You guys are in for another real treat today. Um, in case you haven't listened, you want to go back and hear my friend Millie Barra. Um, she was back on podcast episode number nine, I believe it was. And we came to you um, with our first ever collaboration um, talking about mindfulness. And we could talk for days and I just feel like we just began to scratch the surface. So I invited Millie back for a second time and she probably doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to just keep dragging her back on here because so much of what we've talked about um, both on the podcast and then just in our meetings together is so relevant to what's happening in today. Um, today's day. And you know that I go very heavy on uh, the business side of things or being an entrepreneur in this podcast. But if we were really to peel back all of the layers, we all know that there is such an overlap with everything that we do, especially when you are a female and a mom running a business, especially from home. There's just so many layers to that. And my friend Millie comes um, packing a big punch with lots of really useful tips that we can do to just try. Uh, I'm not going to say balance. I don't know if I really even believe <laughs> that that's possible, but it comes with packing a pretty powerful punch about how to manage it all and navigate it without absolutely losing your marbles in the process. So anyway, I want to welcome back my friend Millie Barra. She is amazing. Uh, like I said, go back and listen to the first ep episode of She and I Together if you have not done that. But we have a really fun topic that we're going to touch on. And and I don't know, maybe a fun is the word actually, it's touchy. It's, <laughs> and it's, um, we're recording this on November 2nd. So I wanna welcome my friend Millie back. Millie, welcome to the Sarah Berry Show. Thank you so much for coming back and hanging out with me today. Well, I'm happy to be here, Sarah. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. You know, we can always talk for hours on end about anything yes. and everything. So Thank you for having me back. And yes, go back and listen to that last podcast that we did together. But for those of you who maybe are new here and don't know who I am, um, my name's Millie and I am a holistic wellness coach and I help working moms who are stuck in the juggling act between work and home, help them lower their anxiety and their emotional overwhelm so that they can have more overall alignment throughout their life. Um, and really I come from the space that we are not meant to survive in this life. And I think so often we as women feel like we're just stuck in that survival mode um, and that this is as good as it's going to get. And it's not. Um, we really are meant to thrive in our life in all areas. It's not always going to be perfect in every area, but we're definitely supposed to become from a space where we feel like we enjoy it. I mean, we have one life to live. So we want to really, you know, that's what I help my clients do is work towards really striving to live this life the way they want to on their terms so that they're not feeling so weighted down by the emotional overwhelm. Yeah, that, that sounds like an easy job, Millie. Sounds like that's <laughs> jump in there and, <laughs> and get it done really easily. Um, so I brought Millie on here and I haven't even really gone into depth with this yet, but Millie. Like I said, it is November 2nd, and I saw my first holiday commercial last night. Full on Santa hats, there was Christmas music, and I love the holidays. I do. I love all the things that come with it. Most things, I shouldn't say all things, but I am always amazed with how much earlier it starts. In fact, two nights ago when we were out trick or treating, we were already seeing Christmas trees up. And um, I think that's great. If you were a Christmas lover, that's amazing. Decorate in April if you want. That doesn't bother me. It's just kind of all the stuff that comes along with the holidays that um, can sometimes not be so fun. And so, of course, I, I knocked on Millie's door and I said, we have to start bringing this topic up. I want to discuss this. I want to talk about what comes along with the holidays. You know, I'm in a product-based business. Um, maybe for those of you that are new here, I, I have my toes in lots of, <laughs> lots of ponds at the moment. I do handmade products. I do gifts. I, I'm now doing this podcast. I have a website. There's lots of balls that I have in the air in business, which really just translates over to real life. So I start to feel the pressure about October 1st um, in terms of just the holiday race. Um, but the world that we're living in right now, um, especially in the middle of a pandemic, um, has put even more pressure. I feel like to shop early, buy early, plan, you know, make sure everything's early, early, early. 
And so I don't know about you, Millie, but the temperature of people that I interact with on a daily basis feels like it's already up much sooner than it is in past years. Is that what you're finding with clients that you're working with and in your line of work? Yeah, it's really interesting because it's like we throw on the costumes and then we rip them off and it's like the mad dash to the finish line of the end of the uh, end of this year. And it's almost like we anticipate, like there's this lead anticipation runway of like to the holidays, right? Because we all look forward to it. I mean, it is such a great time with memories from, you know, the past, but it also can come with some heaviness too, for a couple of reasons. One, Um, especially if you're in a colder climate area. So there is the shift of the seasons and there really is something to the fact that you are receiving less sunlight. Mm -hmm. Um, There's actually a condition called SAD, seasonal affecting disorder, which a lot of people are affected by where, you know, during the summertime, everybody feels a little bit more uppity, right? You're in the sun, you're out, it's warmer versus the winter time, fall, winter, when you're going into more of a hibernation state. However, it seems to be a time where things actually end up speeding up when in nature, it naturally wants to slow down, right? So I have to, I I don't mean to interrupt, but I have to stop you right there. You know, that is so interesting. Millie and I off camera, I don't know, a week or so ago, we're talking about that. And I guess I had not put a lot of thought to that or even realized when you said what tell tell them what you told me that we are like the only animal we are the only that, species yeah that does not follow the trends of the season in the sense that oh. during the colder seasons uh, most creatures, animals, and things are preparing for winter for a hibernation or a slowing down period. Whereas we, you know, kids are in school, things are hyping up, the holidays are happening, we're yeah. rush, 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 go, 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 got to meet the end year goals, whether it's in a business with, you mm-hmm. know, production or hitting a certain dollar amount. So we had this push. And so internally, our body is instinctively going to be like hitting some resistance unknowingly to you so yeah. that it's like, no, I really want to slow down. Yeah. I really need to rest. Yeah. And it, you know, it's hard in this world we live in to honor that. But when you do honor that, it actually helps you have the energy and the well being to push you harder later on when you're actually needing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's something to take into consideration, along with the fact that just the demands of what kind of comes with the season with the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, brings, but there's actually something physically going on that oftentimes brings on kind of this funk or this emotional overwhelm that you may be feeling. Yeah. You know, and I'm obviously, if you've known me in any capacity, you know, that I'm a very heart led person and you know, what I feel like is important. And I sense a lot of the feelings of people around me, but I guess I, I love the idea that there's actual science behind this. There there's, like you said, it's our bodies are actually wired to follow the seasons, just like other animals in the animal kingdom. After all, that's what we are. And I just think it's something that gets discounted so easily that again, you know, and it's so trendy right now to say rest and self-care and all those things, but oh boy, I think if there's any time that that should come more into focus, I think it starts now. Don't you agree? I completely agree. And, you know, and the thing is as a mom, you know, as a female Mm -hmm. role in, in your household, I mean, you're setting the trend for the temperature for your entire house. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, I tried to push away that responsibility because it felt very heavy to me. Yeah. Uh, but I realized, no, like I really, my well-being as the mom in the household really affects everything else. And so yeah. oftentimes, you know, if we tune into our kids, our kids are following those trends too, but they're ignoring it because they see what's going on from mom and dad, you know, or you know, your partner and they're pushing, they're going, oh, it's time to keep going. Okay. We're going to keep going in this and this, and we need more and more. more." And so it's like, everybody ends up this big old ball of like, just everything's kind of a little off topsy turvy. Yeah. Everybody's feeling this momentum, Mm -hmm. but really everybody's wanting to slow down. I mean, cause if you really sat down and asked your kids, I mean, yes, there is a lot of marketing out there about gifts and what they have to have. Again, this is programming that is outside being projected into you. But if you really stripped all that stuff away and really asked what they're wanting, they're probably just really wanting some quality time with you. Mm Mm-hmm. 
they're not the and they're not necessarily needing the you know the new latest game or toy or things like that I mean yeah that's all great but really so wanting that emotional connection yeah so you mean like the the Hallmark film crew is not going to show up in my kitchen and film like the perfect hot chocolate afternoon with my children you mean it doesn't have to be that? It doesn't have yeah, to be that right. Yeah, they just want to snuggle up and watch movies or yeah. play a board game or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and that's the my biggest thing is trying to help women recognize that they can actually slow down. Yeah. They can tune into what really feels good to them because, right, oftentimes there's a lot of expectations put on society, put on ourselves, things that we experience as our own children that we're trying to connect back to that feeling, Yeah, right? Because all of our, I mean, really when it comes down to the, all of our driving force for why we do things Mm -hmm. is to get to a certain feeling. Yeah. Whether it's in your business or in your relationships or in your own emotional well-being, it's all a driving force is your emotions and how you want to feel. So I want to touch on that because I think there is so much to be said. And I, I would bench, I don't want to paint with a wide brush. You hear me say that a lot, but tradition, it feels like, you know, I think there's tradition woven into even a random Tuesday in a July. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like the concept of tradition really floats to the top during this time of the season. Mm-hmm. And I want to touch on that a little bit because you said feelings and when you say the word tradition and feelings, I feel like sometimes it's the same thing because a tradition brings up a lot of those feelings and those memories of things that used to be or have happened before. Um, I want to touch on that a little bit and talk about the link between traditions and what it makes you feel like. And I mean, not always good. (laughs) Yeah. So I was just going to say that there's two sides to this one it's the traditions that obviously you growing up, you really loved having certain traditions. Like one for me, we actually celebrated Christmas on Christmas Eve. Like that was our thing. Yeah. We're a first responder family. And so oftentimes dad was working on, you know, Christmas. So we yeah. planned accordingly would do Christmas Eve and that was our tradition. So for me, like that was a really big deal. And even now going with my own children, I make a big deal out of a Christmas Eve. Um, but basically it's because it's connecting you to how you felt like all of us have an inner child in us, right? Even though we're all grown, but we are shaped and created by our life experiences. Mm -hmm. And in those experiences, we store those emotions, good, bad, or ugly. We store them within our body. Um, and so later on, as we grow up, we're trying to connect either back to that feeling or we're trying to recreate something because we don't want to feel those feelings. So when I was saying like, it's two-sided, there's the good ones where you have those happy family traditions that you are wanting to continue with your current family, or there's things that you wish would have been different as growing up Yeah, and you you aren't wanting to recreate it. And so you change those traditions or you want to feel something, or that's why you have a heaviness during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Why you're like, I don't understand why I'm feeling irritable. I don't understand why I'm, why am I so triggered by this? You know, and, and why am I anger? Like, this is supposed to be a happy time. Why am I so, because it's Mm re-triggering those feelings, those that you experience that are stored in your memory you know, we call it like cell memory, you know, your body remembers these things unknowingly. So how, so how does it store it? What does it actually do when it's holding something kind of walk us through the physicality of a stored emotion? So basically, um, we are all energetic people. We are all made up of energy, like 99.9% of everything on this earth is made up of energy. Okay. And so, emotions are energy in motion. That's all emotion is. I love it's- that. I write that down every time because <laughs> that is, emotions are energy in motion. And what happens is when you experience them, right, you can feel them. They come into your body. You feel it. So if it's a really happy, joyous, right, it comes into your body. It fills you up with joy, happy. You may have a physical response where you're laughing, smiling, things like that. Okay. They hold the highest vibration, like love, joy, um, gratitude. They are, and this is scientifically proven where they are able to actually 
pick this up. And it's the same thing. If you were to walk into a room, right? Like you walk into right. a party and yeah. maybe you weren't feeling that great. And you walk in and you're like, Hey, I think I'm feeling better because everybody's energy is helping raise your vibration. That's Versus if you were to walk in a room full of people who are sad and upset or grieving or shaming mm-hmm. themselves, what does it make you feel? It makes you feel yucky, right? Down. Yeah. It brings you yeah. down. Mm-hmm. So what happens is this energy, this emotion, energy, emotion comes into your body. And there's two things that can happen. Oftentimes when it's a higher vibration, it helps raise your vibration and you feel great and you are able to process it normally. But the emotions that are of a lower vibration, anger, frustration, sadness, shame, guilt, um, doubt, self-doubt, they lower your vibration Mm -hmm. in your body. And what can happen is they can get stuck in your body. So these, again, It's something we can't see just like we can't see the wind, but it has a direct effect on us and it gets stuck in our body and it can lodge in different places and it stays stored there and it can start manifesting as physical dis-ease, whether it's physical pain, emotional, um, you know, I don't want to say instability, but emotional burdens where you're having anxiety, depression, PTSD, overwhelm, maybe sleeping issues, and it stays stored there. So then what happens is holidays roll around. So let's say you stored a trapped emotion of sadness from when you were five years old Mm -hmm. and somebody yelled at you on Christmas morning. Mm-hmm. because maybe you were doing something you shouldn't be doing, or maybe you were peeking underneath the Christmas tree mm-hmm. and you got in trouble. And yeah. so instantly you feel that emotion of sadness and it stores in your body. So then when Christmas comes around, yeah, just the idea of Christmas, mm-hmm. even though now as you know, adult Millie, you don't remember that event, but your body does. Interesting. And so it re-triggers that emotion. And then you start feeling that in your body because your body starts vibrating at that emotion. Yeah. So does that mean we always have to feel that way when we peek under the tree? Cause I really need to know what's in that cute wrapped box. I really <laughs> need to know <laughs> what, what that is. So walk us through some practical things when you start, first of all, I think a bigger part of the battle is when you become conscious of those feelings and right. Ooh, I wonder why this makes me feel this way. So I I guess walk us through something like that when, when we, and we all have them good or bad, exciting, sad, it doesn't matter. Kind of walk us through what that feels like. Right. Well, and the thing is, it's really key to just being mindful. And again, that's about slowing down. I mean, going back to the whole fact that we are in a fast paced society where we have been taught to kind of just stuff, ignore, keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to feel it. No, you're not supposed to cry. You know, all these programming things where we're not supposed to feel. And I think when you start noticing like, Ooh, I'm feeling a little discomfort in my body. I'm feeling a little something that this doesn't feel like me is you just Mm kind of have to slow down. And first of all, one thing I, I learned from a mentor of mine is just go, that's interesting because sometimes when you start mulling, I'm like, why am I feeling like this? Like, where is this coming from? Like you actually end up making something bigger than it really needs to be. When in reality, your body is just just going through the motions. It's like, Mm -hmm. I'm just signaling that this is still here. Those are all warning signs that there's probably some healing that needs to be done. That's interesting that you said that because I don't, do you listen to Simon Sinek? I don't. Oh, he's amazing. He's had Ted talks and he's, he's a leadership speaker and motivational. And I'm, (laughs) I'm a sucker for all of those things, but he is really interesting because he said, I, I think it was probably a podcast that I was listening to. He, he travels all over and speaks on stages. And he said he got to where he would get so worked up and so nervous before he would go on stage. And someone would, you know, inevitably say, are you okay? And he'd say, oh gosh, I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous. And he said he could just, and he had done it hundreds of times and he could not shake that feeling. And somebody told him once to start saying, I'm really excited when you're nervous. And he said, you know, of course, the first few times he was still just really nervous and and he still is, even though he's a veteran speaker, but he has changed it around to start saying, I'm just really excited. And he said it changed the whole trajectory of those moments for him leading up to speaking in front of people on a stage. And I thought that is so interesting 
even just the words we say, how mm -hmm. you can reprogram a feeling that's been there and, and you still have it, but your mind tells you now that it's, that you're excited instead right. of nervous. So exactly because your inner mind does not know what is happening in the present or happening in the past. Yeah. It has no concept of time. So huh. it may still think that, oh, the Christmas tree is going up or, oh, it's Thanksgiving. And then it takes yeah. you back to a horrible family fight. Maybe that happened over Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. And so it can't, it doesn't know the difference of what isn't, what happened or mm -hmm. even what's necessarily real or not real. Right. right. So that's where then, you know, you said Simon, right. Was his name? Simon Sinek. I'll tag yeah. you. Yeah. Perfect. So when he says, okay, instead of saying, I'm really nervous, I'm excited mm -hmm. because that's the other thing is the mind, the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between joy and fear. Right. It, it, it's the same. It can oftentimes it has the same response sometimes Isn't that crazy. And you're just rephrasing it. Yeah. And I don't want to say tricking, but you're training your brain to like, no, this is how I want to feel. So yeah. that's, what's really important. And that's why I say, use the word interesting because you don't want to spend too much time mulling it over, but that is your warning sign mm -hmm. that, Hey, there may be something to this. Mm -hmm. Hey, whether you want to look into it more, but that is your, like, there may be some healing that needs to be happening because yeah. reality we are shaped from the experiences mm -hmm. um you know and sometimes i throw out the word trauma which sometimes can ruffle people's feathers because when they think trauma they think something very horrific right 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 um but really our mind interprets trauma as simple as a parent who is emotionally unavailable wow so to a child that is trauma interesting you know, and so when I say people like take a look at like what's happened in your life and maybe there needs to be some healing or some right. trauma work that needs to be mm -hmm. done or connecting with your inner child and healing that inner child. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh no, like I, my life's great. Like I don't have anything, you know, my life's yeah. not horrific, but again, it's your life experience and it's how you have perceived and interpreted those life experiences Yeah, that create that emotional baggage that we so, carry it on is eating extra frosted Christmas cookies, a good strategy because that <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother topic that around food and emotions. My go-to from about Thanksgiving on, it's like, ah, we'll just have another cookie. Yeah. Cookies for breakfast. Absolutely do it. <laughs> okay. So. so Sarah, let's talk about this. Then. I'm going to put you in the hot seat for a second. Okay. Oh go back to your childhood. And I want you to go back to maybe your first experience when you were having Christmas cookies. Yeah. So think about, go back to there. It was can wonderful. You, can you think about how did you feel? Like, happiness, just absolute bliss as a child. Of course, Christmas cookies are awesome, right? You're decorating yeah. them with mom yeah. or dad yeah. and everybody's gathered. Everybody's happy. Yeah. So there's two things with that. Basically you are infusing that cookie mm -hmm. with those emotions. Mm. You have infused that food with those emotions that you were feeling. Interesting. Very interesting. And so when you go to eat those things again, yeah, it sends, it triggers those emotions that are within you. But when in reality, when we strip it away, it's just flour and sugar and yeah, you know, lots of sugar and yeah. everything else. Yeah. But it, it takes you back to that. It takes you back to that because feeling in those, and that's what you want. So perhaps during the holidays, that's why you want to go to that because maybe you're feeling yeah. a little overwhelmed and anxious because it's rush, 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 go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I just need to take a minute. So you're reaching for something outside yourself. Yeah. That's so my cool. whole goal is to help women learn that they don't have to reach outside of themselves, that really everything they need to feel more stable, to feel emotionally strong mm -hmm. is within them. Okay, and it's about so reconnecting with that. You know, I'm going to ask you to break that down. So, and I like practical, I like, you know, everybody likes three steps right. and I know it's way more complicated than that, but today, give us a couple of things that when we're faced with wanting to hit someone with a shopping cart while we're strolling, <laughs> strolling through holiday shopping or realizing that you have three commitments and they all overlap on the same Thursday night and they're all holiday related or companies coming, oh my gosh, my house, what do mm -hmm. I do? 
can you give us a couple of really practical things that we can do that might, that might help, you know, not make it go away, but mitigate those feelings or how to handle and, and get through the hall. Not, I don't want to say get through the holidays. Enjoy, enjoy the holidays again and not have it come with this looming dark cloud of, oh my gosh, how am I going to make it? Yeah. I think one really big thing is um, you need to make sure, and this goes whether it's the holidays or not, Mm-hmm. You need to prioritize yourself, mamas, like your needs yeah. um, and make sure that you are doing well. Because one thing that I've learned through this, my own healing journey over the course of the last five years is like, if I'm not doing well, nobody else is doing well. Mm-hmm. And really you need, we, we are, we give so much out. We need to make sure that we are giving of ourselves as well. Yeah. And sometimes we search for exterior things to do this, but really we need to ask our souls. Like, what do we really need? Do we need five minutes just to pause, Mm -hmm. take a breath, maybe go find a quiet corner. You know, my go-to is like, I'll pop in a guided meditation or some relaxing music and I'll just like close my eyes for five minutes and Mm -hmm. do breath work. Do you just need to find a comfy chair and sit with a cup of coffee? You Mm -hmm. know, um, something that makes you happy because we're right. We're all recovering people pleasers. Something that makes you happy is something you need to do. But in that moment, when you're actually getting triggered, right? Mm -hmm. Because these are basically triggers, you know, whether it's somebody cutting you off um, as you're driving or you're stuck in line and, you know, something's happening at the cash register or your kids are having a fit. Those are all triggers that are triggering something within you. So really, I think just taking a second taking a couple deep breaths. And again, not, we're not going to hyperventilate. I was going to say, it might usually involve a brown paper bag. Is that the kind right. of breath? And that's thing? oftentimes where we go to, because then we're spiraling into almost a borderline panic attack, right? Yeah. Because yeah. We, just, it, we feel our body temperature rise. We feel just that ball of energy that's just racing inside of us. And we just need to go back to our breath a lot of times. And again, not from the shoulder, we're not hyperventilating, but really just stop. And I mean, I've done this in the car with my kids having a fit in the background. I have a six-year-old and eight-year-old and lately they love to argue and fight with each other oh in the boy. back seat. <laughs> so I've even tried to do this where I just take those three breaths and that helps yeah. lower your parasympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight mm-hmm. and connect to your breath. And then really ask yourself, okay, what am I feeling? Because initially you're going to, I say, well, I'm angry or I'm really pissed off or, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm sad or frustrated or whatever. You're going to give an initial one, but that's just the tipping point. Like that's the red light blinking and really there's something underneath, right? My kids are having a tantrum. They're not listening to me. I've asked them to be quiet like 5 million times and they're not listening to me. And I'm really angry and mad at them right now. You mean really what's at the root of it? I'm not a bad mom and I'm terrible and I'm raising heathens. Is that not part of the the story? (laughs) And oftentimes it's no, you're frustrated because they're not validating you. They're not listening to you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And this makes you sad because you don't feel like your, your worth is important Mm -hmm. enough for them to listen. Yeah. You know, so really identify and really also the other thing too, because we're around a lot of people around the holidays Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the majority of us women are more empathic. And what I mean by that is we tend to absorb things from other people. We absorb their other energy. We can pick up on how they're feeling. Yeah. So sometimes the question is, is this mine or is this somebody else's? Mm Mm-hmm is this really my emotion that I'm feeling or am I picking this up from the crowds of people or even my children or my husband in my home? Just uh, call me Sarah Sponge. (laughs) You know, (laughs) so exactly what I go through. Like you said, walking into a room, it's interesting how you can feel what's happening, almost feel right. And, And you could walk me in blindfolded and I could probably feel what's happening. Right. So, you know, an action step for that is really holding the intention again, because the power of our mind Mm -hmm. is way stronger than we give credit for, but really holding the intention. What is mine is mine. And what is there is theirs. Yeah. I am only going to allow my energy in and I'm going to keep everyone else's out. And that doesn't mean that you love anybody less or you're being insensitive or anything like that. 
you're again, just setting these healthy boundaries and you can set energetic boundaries too, of Mm -hmm. this is mine, you know? And so when you have those triggers in those moments where you're frustrated, go back to your breath, say, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And just go, okay, what am I really feeling? And then ask yourself, am I hungry? Am I tired? Yeah. Do, does my body need something else right now? Does it not need to be keep pushing, mm-hmm. you know, and really figure out, is this due to a, a human need? <laughs> Am I needing something where I just need to sit and be quiet? I need to feed myself. I need, you know, whatever it may be, or is there something else? And then if you want, you can journal about it to help process mm-hmm. it out. Um, one thing I do in the moment, cause oftentimes I can't just sit and journal is I actually, I'll take my three deep breaths. I'll go, okay feeling frustrated. Right. And the thing is, is we don't want that to now create a new vibrational frequency that gets stuck in your body. So we're going to go, okay, I'm feeling frustrated and feeling irritated. And I'm just going to take a deep breath and I'm going to go, I'm going to release and delete all frustration from the past, present and future now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to let it pass through me. Interesting. And it's really interesting when you start practicing this and implementing this, you're like, yeah, I actually do feel better. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. That's really their stuff. That's not my stuff. Well, and you know, that's such an important point because if we were really to get serious here, girls for just a minute, who puts all the pressure on who we do, we do it to ourselves a lot of times. And like you said, there's a lot of external things, you know, every Mm -hmm. other commercial on television and all, you know, we can blame a lot of that. And it's a real thing. I'm not trying to discount that, but we get to decide what we let in or out. And I think 99% of the time, at least in my own experience, it's me that is expecting that Hallmark movie crew to come through and see how perfect our holiday is. And the truth is it is, it's perfect for us but it might not be TV worthy and that's okay too. So I think, you know, a lot of times we have those expectations and then they spill over onto everybody else when they're not meeting them. You know, well, why didn't they bring the fruitcake? And why didn't they, and nobody likes fruitcake. I don't even know why I said that, but um, it's almost like you got to kind of check yourself a little bit too. You can't blame it all on everything else going on around you. You're, you're very right in saying it starts with us. It starts here. Well, and the other thing too is, one thing I'm, I'm making sure I'm doing better about too, is asking for help. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah mentioned word, something before we hopped word. on here. Uh, <laughs> we talked about, she saw somewhere on Instagram about the no vember. Oh yes. The no vember learning to say no to certain things and yeah. not putting too much on your plate, but also like the people around us who really do want to help us and have the well being is they can't read our minds. Yeah. And so if you do have an expectation on how you're wanting something to be like, or how you want to feel like maybe set that expectation, you know, and verbalize that expect expectation coming from a space of love, not like the, you should have done this, you know, I'm angry because I, I wanted, well, how are they supposed to know how you want something to feel? Yeah. People can't read our minds. And really the other thing too, and I really challenge a lot of you guys, maybe before we really get into the deep dive into being in the holidays is Mm -hmm. maybe take a second and journal on how do you really want it to feel Yeah, and hold that intention on how you want it to feel and look Mm -hmm. like, and then maybe sit down at the dinner table with your kids and your husband or your partner and ask what like explain that. And then maybe ask them, what did they want it to feel? I mean, it's a really great learning experience for our children to be able to be more introspective and go within and taking it off of the more materialistic thing about what are we really wanting to feel? And maybe by holding that sacred space and and that intention, Mm -hmm. then you're putting that out there. That that is our goal of what we're wanting to do. And so you kind of have that as a compass to Mm -hmm. guide you through the holidays. And I I don't know about you, Millie, but when you ask that question, I am always amazed at how much simpler, especially Mm -hmm. kids want it to be. They, (laughs) they are precious people that we should all be, we should be going to them and and modeling after what they're doing. They, they take joy in the simplest things and all do they care if the matching paper wraps the, or, or match, if the wrapping paper matches the ornaments on the tree this year. Heck no, they don't yeah. care. They probably don't even notice when you do that, you know? So, yeah. and not to diminish that, you know, I I'm all about 
beautiful. I mean, I'm Thank in you. that line of work, but it's always amazing to me how um, much simpler they actually really kind of want it to be. So, <laughs> well, and I think too, the important thing is to remember to tune in to what feels good and what brings you joy. Yeah. Um, you know, and for some people it is, they really find a lot of joy in the wrapping and that is great. I am not that person, <laughs> um, you know, but really tuning into what brings you to those emotions that will keep you yeah. higher up on that frequency scale. And again, that would be finding things that bring you joy and make you happy and gratitude and, and things like that versus the things that are going to be pulling you down that you're dreading yeah. to have to do because you think that is what the expectation is. Yeah. And so by verbalizing again, having those conversations, mm -hmm. which can be hard. Well, I know. It, I know it's easier <laughs> said than done, but you know what I love about you, Millie, is you always give us, it, there's not one right answer. And I don't know about everybody that's listening to this right now, but isn't that a relief just to know that it doesn't have to be just one way that right. you get to decide you. And I love the word temperature. You get to set the temperature. You get to plot your own path here as we go through the holidays. Right. And you know what? Even some of the, the funk that comes along with it is even commercialized. You know, we're even talking about it on commercials about the holiday race and all those things. And so, you know, separate from that a little bit, the best that you can enjoy you guys. I hope everybody enjoys the holidays. Keep it simple. Gifts don't have to always be in packages. There's so many different ways that you can give of yourself and your time. And let's just be honest, we need to connect more now than ever. And maybe it means hot cocoa at your neighbor's house this year or something simple like that. And what that does for your emotions and your feelings and, and making you feel happy and, and brings joy comes in so many different ways. So I hope, I wish that for all of you this holiday, but if you're like, I am, I don't ever get enough of Millie. We love to sit and talk. We could go for days, but I was excited to hear that she is doing something special this season for the holidays. And I want you all to go and sign up. I'm going to be there. I think I'm already, I'm in the group. I know that I'm in the private group, but Millie, I want you to talk about what you have coming here in just a couple of short weeks to help all of us get through the holidays without just completely losing our fruitcake altogether. Absolutely. So one thing is I've just launched over on Facebook, a private Facebook group for working moms who are healing anxiety and emotional overwhelm. And that's just basically a safe space mm -hmm. for us women to come together for me to kind of sprinkle in some of these, you know, things that you can apply into your life, encouragement, things that I've done to, you know, in my life to help through my own journey with anxiety mm -hmm. and emotional overwhelm. Um, but I, what I am going to be doing coming up the week prior to Thanksgiving week is I am going to be doing a defunk your funk boot camp. Oh my gosh, I just love the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it's just going to be a three day um, in the Facebook group. So if you're not in there, go over to Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Millie Barra over there or on Instagram at Millie Barra, M I L L I E B A R R A. And there's a link in the bio where you can then uh, go over into my Facebook group there and sign up for that. But basically it's going to be three days where I just, I go into a little bit deeper um, and it's kind of a little bit of way of being accountable and creating some goals or a vision of what you want to do and how I can help support you through that. Um, and then on Friday, I'm going to be doing a bonus training. So it's going to be lots of fun and you get to see me in action about what, and a little bit more of a deep dive about what it looks like with working with me and how I work with my clients. So so I'm really excited. It's the first year that I've done this. And this I really awesome. think it's just, it's just needed. You know, we all yeah. are kind of coming out of this pandemic. And can I just take a second? How many people actually through the pandemic were a little bit relieved in the fact that they did not have to do the normal routine oh, of I, going and yeah. seeing and in some ways, as I mean, I, as sad as it was that we didn't get to celebrate in larger groups and things, but it kind of took some of the pressure off, like, and it was a slower pace. So yeah. I'll be the first one to raise my hand. And I know that might be kind of an unpopular thing, but I don't think that there was, it was always so horrible that we, that we had to slow down. We had to, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. not, not such a bad thing for certain situations. 
Yeah. So as we're coming back into more new normal of yeah. what that looks like and gathering and things in this high paced stuff, you know, I just wanted to help bring the awareness that you don't have to be the circumstance of the season. You don't yeah. have to fall into that funk or that emotional overwhelm during the season. And so yeah. I am doing that. So feel free to sign up and you don't have to do anything to sign up. You just have to join the Facebook group and you'll see it in the Facebook group and, and all the and information give us in some there. Dates on that. Millie, do you have dates? Yes, that was going to be, um, November 16th, 17th and 18th. Okay. With our bonus day on November 19th. Awesome. Okay. And I'm going to put all of this information in the show notes. So in case you're driving or jogging or something, and you don't have a way to write this down, I will put dates and all the information for you to get into Millie's group. I'm going to be there. I think it sounds like just a really fun way to, I don't know, connect with other moms and other women and people that are already kind of seeing the same holiday commercials that I'm seeing. And you know, partly getting excited, but partly starting to feel that little bit of holiday panic starting to set in and how we're going to get through it all again this year. So, right. And it's not about adding one more thing, right? No. We're, we're not wanting to add one more thing, but it's just maybe readjusting some things yeah, and carving out maybe some time for you again, yeah. self-care is a big buzzword. Um, mm-hmm. and I mean, really self-care is just making sure that your basic needs are met. Yeah. And making them a priority because yeah. we as moms and business women put a lot of other needs before our own. And then that is why we end up in burnout. Yeah. And that's no way of living. So yeah. so yeah. So this isn't about adding anything else. It's just about supporting you and helping you. And one last thing that uh, I just want to add that I heard from another mentor of mine, she talks about how everybody needs to stay in their own dang lane. Oh gosh. Isn't that the truth? (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, okay. So that's kind of my last thing is like, stay in your own lane, focus on you. Um, and maybe work towards setting some healthy boundaries, learning to say no to the things that, you know, yeah. Say no. No no. no November. And if you're having a hard time (laughs) saying no, that's kind of something I help do is getting to the root of the issue of why you can't say no. (laughs) Raising my hand again over here. If you're not the if you're not watching on YouTube, you should be. My hand's been up about half of the podcast. So (laughs) well, Millie, it is always a pleasure to have you. Like I said, like it or not, I'm gonna drag you back. I hope you'll come willingly because we have so much fun. And like I said, there's just so many topics that are so um, relative to just life that, you know, you help with just some things that I think impact all of us. Um, you know, I told you I'm heavily in business, but when you're an entrepreneur, it all kind of weaves together anyway. So I just love that you always come with practical tips and you just feel real. You just feel like another mom trying to make her way like the rest of us are. So I appreciate you. You do great work and you're just fun. And I love you, Millie. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great day. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.